young Alexander Hamilton dreamed of elevating his status through the engagement of war. As captain of New York artillery, Hamilton was noticed and honored to become aide-de-camp of General Washington. After the war, Hamilton crafted his ideas into the U.S. Constitution and Federalist Papers. As Treasury Secretary, he further united the states through a strong central currency. Experience Alexander Hamilton. Live. So, how do you feel about that? Like this, the systematic takedown of all these other uh, potential countries, which would have, which could have brought the dollar to its knees. Like, how do you feel about? actions that America has done? Uh, well, it sounds like your question is making a lot of assumptions. And there are actually four different parts to your question, and I can take either part uh, individually, please. all in whole. Yeah, um, but some um, of the suppositions of taking the dollar down to its knees, uh, that makes no sense why anyone would want to do that. We live on a planet, and this planet is governed by market forces. Uh, when you have a free and open market, those forces behave, uh, on average, most efficiently. Once you put in the hand of control, uh, you start to put weight onto the different levers of the market. To break down any section of the market is to cause inefficiencies and delays throughout the market. And no matter what item it is, be it oil, be it gold, be it someone's currency, uh, the ripple effects from such actions continue out and affect everyone on the planet in one way or another. And so for anyone to want to take down the dollar uh, without uh, reimposing a force that would take over the control of the dollar, for example, the actions that are taken by China over recent history in order to try to uh, supplant the dollar as the default world currency for most commodities, uh, that is an instance where they want to just take down the dollar and bring up something else. But to take the dollar down to its knees, as you say, that does not make sense for anyone who wants to have a nice life on this planet. You're just causing problems. No, now, that being like, said, <laughs> thanks, go ahead. That will happen, though, right? Uh, eventually, like, just like any currency, the dollar will not be the main standard of trading sometime in the future. We don't know when that will be, but looking at our past, we can determine that there will come a point when it won't be, no matter how hard they try. And one of the things that the United Nations military machine and the politicians, like in cahoots with each other, they, they literally went to wars to maintain that sovereignty. Like that cannot be denied either. Uh, like what happened in Libya, how do you see that? Because the only reason Gaddafi was taken out was because he had the potential to be, his currency would have, and, and the oil that Libya had, or the oil that Saudi Arabia collectively has, have the potential to overthrow the dollar, then they can use their oil as a standard and set their own currency as the main one. And, and in order to stop that from happening, the military machine of the United States went to war, right? Which, to me, as an outsider, right, we see something which the uh, people of the Allied forces in the Second World War, what America stood for, goes against w what they did back in the Second World War, when they actually came together for world peace, right? But when these sort of things start to happen where they go to wars just so they can maintain a political advantage, or they can maintain their own higher ground, and they're okay to they're ready to kill people for it, then something has gone terribly wrong. Uh, Do you see it the same I, way? I agree you? that any time in society you have a situation where people have to uh, resort to to death and murder in order to be uh, happier, it's a, it's a dire situation no matter what. Um, I cannot speak of the Libyan war. I was not around during that time. Uh, but I can put into perspective some of your uh, your 
um, your remarks, the if you look at the value, the total value of the commodity that any country has, for in this case would be Libya and oil, if you think about the total value of that and then uh, divide that out over time as for the processing time to actually change the raw material into a currency and think about how long that takes. Now, that gives you a comparative number to compare against other countries uh, and the world in total. And you can put such comparisons also in line with new currencies that are coming about, for example, cryptocurrencies, as there have been literally $2 trillion uh, created in cryptocurrencies in the last couple of years. That addition of $2 trillion did not bring any country to its knees or devalue different parts of the world. So when you're dealing still in trillions of dollars, you can still move that easily from country to country, per region to region, even person to person, and it will not have that much of an effect. If you think about the total amount of oil, which then would equal the value of the currency, um, because there would be... That is the... the well, the a currency is based on something. The dollar is based on something. Gold, uh, usually um, gold in the treasury. Historically, gold has been a standard, but it is not any longer. The American dollar is ba backed by the faith that the U.S. government will pay its bills. It is not based on any hard currency. Uh, we have been no, based but, on hard but, currency throughout time, but no longer are we based yeah. upon gold. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interject, but I was just going to say, like, the, in an ideal economy, right, any currency that any government holds has to be backed by gold that they, that they hold in their treasury or uh, items or materials of equal value. Now, the problem is that we, in the times that we live in, uh, governments have started printing money without any real material to back that money up because we live in a system of uh, credit and debt right so, that so is that's correct. why in, in today's I have a time on that. the u.s citizens are in debt to chinese citizens right because they're the ones lending all the banks the money so yeah. this system uh, or I, i'm just going to make this real quick sister and please then you can you can go ahead so so this system is inherently flawed is my i think we both can agree on that and, and whatever means we, uh, uh, we decide to take to keep these sorts of systems afloat will, would not be beneficial in the long run. Eventually, they will crumple on their own selves. And that's when, you know, normal people, people of good faith, people who work hard, who just want to pray, just want to live their lives as normally and easily as they, they're the ones who are going to suffer, nobody else. So... I think uh, you wouldn't disagree with that. Uh, well, I'll let our friend uh, also interject, and I will uh, then let you know my thoughts about that. Yeah, so leaving the gold standard, I mean, gold is only important because we believe it's important, right? Because we give it value. Same with diamonds. Diamonds are prolific, but because the supply is cool, <clears throat> controlled, uh, uh, then we believe they are scarce and have value. So that's one point. But debasement, debasement, so back a long time ago, uh, like before Christ, like right around the AD, BC time period, you had uh, kingdoms that would take their coin with their precious metal and then recall those coins produce the precious metal in the coin and then reproduce a, a coin with lower precious metal in it and then distribute that again and that was called debasement very similar to inflation uh, and I think that it doesn't, it's not really based on the dollar. It, it's, it's based on 
the idea in, in people's heads. And like, yes, the dollar is powerful currently because you buy oil. You mentioned that. Like, oil is bought and, and sold all over the world by the U.S. dollar only. So that is what makes the dollar strong. One of the reasons that makes the dollar strong. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I agree with Mr. Hamilton that it's probably, you know, the faith that the U.S. will pay its bills. But it is also that like, the dollar is strong because of uh, the U.S. industrial military complex. Uh, and you are correct. Uh, what's your name? Let me see. Uh, donuts. Uh, the currencies, it's not just currencies, it's governments that that rise and fall. And the U.S. is due for, for a change in the way uh, our government transacts or behaves. Uh, and that's that's all I have to say. I'll listen to <laughs> this person up here. I'll Thank you. Got. The we agree that any system created by man is inherently flawed. Um, it is the hopes of capitalism that the market forces, without outside governmental pressure, can provide some of the most natural balances in the prices of items. When we look at the world in general and think about how we want to live and how we want to store our value, our wealth, uh, we end up with limited possibilities. Uh, throughout the history of man, we have tied anything that someone values to wealth and to currency. Uh, if you happen to uh, really adore tulips, there was at one point they were used by currency. The United States used future promises on barrels of tobacco as tobacco notes. Um, future notes on other commodities were also used as tradable currencies. Um, any time that you have any item that someone will want, it has value. But the trick is how do you reliably save your money over the long term? Most of the – if you're dealing in commodities, those commodities will spoil over time. Um, and so that's not a good thing. You'd want something that maintains its value over time. Uh, metals have a natural appreciation in life as well. Uh, metals, uh, typically the metals that do not tarnish, metals that are malleable and soft, easy to work, and do not require additional work to, in order to keep their brilliance of luster as we like shiny things. Well, those are the metals that we value higher, hence gold and sometimes uh, platinum uh, is up there as well. Uh, but we must not forget that it is more than just the shininess and the non-tarnished uh, metallic properties of gold that make it important. It is also tied to the actual use of the metal in society. So when society needs to buy gold in order to put into different circuits or other metals, uh, they, the market forces is giving a price to that metal. You can have any currency attached to any metal, but you now limit yourself to the amount of currency that you can produce. So it is a dual-edged sword in that once you tie yourself to a, a precious metal or any object, you are now subject to how quickly you can create more of that precious metal. During times of strife or war or uh, a medical outbreak like you recently had, uh, there is a great need for governments whose often primary care is the health and wellness of their citizens. There is a responsibility of the government to react and to do something for the betterment of their citizens, give them vaccine or defend their territory or whatnot. And having the ability to borrow money is a little bit less than the ability to simply create it yourself. 
Uh, of course, there are pros and cons to both of the situations. But you must understand that once we are taken off of any type of hard metal currency and our currency is built on faith, then it does become the other countries of the world that sustain the model. The millions of Chinese that own trillions in our national debt, just like when I was creating the United States of America, I realized that the states had the original debt, and I took the debt from the states and put it into the federal government because though pe those people who were owed the money they have a duty to care for the person who owes them money. And that was the financial basis that which I started the United States. And so China has a, uh, a default uh, responsibility to help America maintain the value of the dollar to a stable rate because they need to hold their currency in some type of stable currency. Um, no matter what currency you choose in the world, each currency can value it up and down because of inflation, because of supply. Just look at what's happening in Russia right now. So the people that are in Russia, for example, would want to change the value of their currency um, by changing currencies because one is depreciating quite quickly. So if they would change it into a cryptocurrency, hello, um, or to uh, the dollar or the or different any currency, they would lose less money and it would behoove them to do that. So this is one of the economic levers that society has in order to try to uh, leave a level of control uh, over the world. And this is the economic control that you were speaking of as well. And okay, I have a question. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, okay. So I'm very curious about the debt that China owns. And I, I hadn't really heard that thought before that the uh, debt holder uh, would be responsible for the debt, the debt or um, to. So d does that mean that China like doesn't want us if yeah. I owed you a million dollars and I said that I would pay you in due time, uh, you would be careful to make sure that I did not die prematurely in a duel with someone before I paid you the money. So it is the same reasoning sorry, in I, that I China, China will yeah. want us to to fulfill the value of their currency. So if I can quickly like... interject, I think uh, I, I disagree with this idea that, uh, you know, the Chinese government or whoever is lending U.S. any form of debt, uh, they owe the people, uh, you know, some sort of relief package, you know, because the, the, the idea of uh, lending anybody money in itself shows that uh, Let's suppose you have a lot of money, right? You, you're a bank, whatever, you're an organization, and I am in need of some money for whatever purpose that is mine. Maybe I need to borrow a car, I need to, uh, I need to buy a car, I need to renovate my house, whatever that may be. I come to you and I ask you for money, right? So that automatically puts me in a position where I am not strong enough to take care of my needs. So by default, I am a weaker person asking for help. So, so this idea of lending people money in return of a full payment, uh, an equal payment, or, or uh, a payment of a certain amount of interest on top of that is inherently wrong. That's what we believe. We believe religiously, we've also been told that if somebody asks you for money, if you have the capacity to give it to them, then just do that. But don't expect or demand anything in return for that because in, in the eyes of God, that is the best way to behave on this earth, right?